Welcome to another photo book critique. This time it will be Yoda Yuki's photo book, which is a little bit controversial. Even though people are saying Nagahama Neru's is controversial, I feel like this one should be a little bit more. I mean, she is a fairly young member, but that doesn't deter from other photo books being released. I feel like they should have given Yoda Yuki a little bit more time to mature in order to release a photo book. Of course, this could mean that there's going to be a second one, but I feel like maybe once she gets older and is a little bit more into herself, grows a little bit more, and even grows her mind a little bit more, there's more opportunity, which the photo book doesn't really explore much into the lewd side, which I appreciate. It, there's My overall impression of the photo book right now from the beginning is it's a good photo book to start. I feel like this is laying down the foundations and getting her more practice than it is showing off a great photo book. Now, the photographer who shot this actually hasn't shot other photo books before of 48 or 46. He's done one other photo book. So, Kosuke Mai, this is actually a really good interpretation to see how exactly the style is of this photographer and see how well this person can do in the future. So let's start off with this cover, and this isn't the best cover ever. There's really good photos in here that I feel like could have been a better option for a cover. I feel like the other versions of this photo book have been a little bit better. There's one I really don't like. This one's my second favorite, and the other one I like more. So it was interesting to see who got which cover, and this is being the regular one, seeing this being the cover for it. Again, really nice color tone overall, but nothing really that wows you. In fact, I think this back cover is way better of a photo. We get to see this photo in the actual photo book, and I really do like this photo. I like the vibe that's going on. I like the little light that's over here. I like a lot about this photo, and especially how it shows a lot of the scenario. It doesn't really scream Singapore, but you can see that it is somewhere else, not in Japan. It kind of leaves that mystery of like, ooh, where is this? And looking at the inside cover, we see it's a little bit more about Photoshop and more about the characteristic of the person. So it's really interesting to see the actual take on the inside cover being this kind of like cut out things of some photos from inside of the photo book. I'm not sure what the decision was, whether it was good to have this or maybe other photos, but just filling the paper, it doesn't feel like the most high quality paper. So maybe they're like, oh hey, we can't do like that colorful stuff or make it super black and white because Two other photo books have done that, so let's let's go for something different. And I kind of like that they went for something different. It does make it look yearbooky again, but I feel like since she, she's so young, I feel like it kind of fits in with that. Looking at this, we get to see the start of where it was actually announced, and turning the page, we get to see, bam, the reaction that she had for this. Which I do like, and we have been teased that this would be included. This is actually the promo for when it actually got announced. So seeing it in the actual photo book is fairly interesting. And this is very much in one of those moments that is super hard to get. And I really appreciate that they got this moment. And moving on to the first page, we actually have the same exact reaction, which I really, really, really like. I like the whole like, here's this reaction, and then bam, we get to see her in a different environment with the same reaction. I think it's a really nice turn of page and a really nice transition into the photo book. And then here we have the scenario that's actually on the cover. And again, I don't really like these underwater shots because it kind of distorts everything. This one kind of doesn't hurt that bad. I mean, it widens the hips a little bit. But I feel like, again, these underwater ones, you have to be really careful on. Then we move on to these two photos. And right here is like the worst it gets in terms of lewdness. But I feel like this photo right here is actually really good in showing off like the physique and showing a little bit more body shape into it. But we also have a bit of scenario in the background, along with this nice leading line over here. I really do appreciate when they include these kind of details in there. Then move on to this one, which I feel like this one would have worked out better if it was a wider shot. I mean, we can see that it is a wide lens here, but maybe having her a little bit more in the back, having maybe like three quarters of her body and having this blurry background would have been a nice touch. So this one up front, you could kind of see the distortions in the face and different things happening. As well as it being shot a little bit under, making her look a little bit bigger, not making her look small and cute as she is. So maybe something like this, but I feel like this one is cropped a little bit weird with all of this extra headroom and over here a lot of headroom. I don't know if this is the photographer's style, but 
I don't really like a lot of headroom in here. I do like this shot right here. I wish the photographer maybe experimented a little bit more with these railings and leading lines and doing what they did before at the pool scene, maybe having it a little bit more like that in this one because you get to see the wide environments, which I really appreciate. Again, in these travel ones, always show the wide environments and you'll be able to see more about the environments that they are in or also include cultural things. And then move on to this weird like small little one that looks like it's like five by seven that you could print out and keep right here. So it kind of makes it look scrapbooky in that sense. And I'm not too sure if this benefits with this photo next to it. And then move on to a nice close up right here. I like that this light is over here rimming her head. And there's also light over here giving rim light to the body. So I think this is fairly nice. We also get to see in the reflection of her eyes that there is a light in back of the photographer and giving this night flat lighting, making it all very soft and all very appealing lighting. And plus we get to see a little bit more of the details thanks to the photo being so tech sharp. Then we move on to two more personality based photos and I do like that these are included. This shows a little bit more of her goofy personality while this one shows more a little bit that she's like still young. So she's over here being all covered up and make it makes it look a little bit more cutesy than it does some other photo books like Eto Mises or Shirai Shimai. Then we have a transition. I feel like this photo would have been stronger if everything was in focus. It's rare that I say both things should be in focus because in this case, I think having her blurry and the background in there, I can see where the photographer is coming from, kind of wanting to show the environment and making that the highlight. But I feel like she is part of the photo book and this is her photo book. So maybe having her in focus would have been a better decision, but having both, would have had everything in focus. And real quick, I want to talk about this. There seems to be a lot of very, very close up photos. I don't know if this is her thinking she should be close to the camera or if there's just like a lot of those photos that decided to become better. Maybe it was the editor's choice at the final decision, but I'm not personally a big fan. Again, having it with a wide angle lens and super close to the camera isn't really the best look. This photo right here, we get to see a lot of blown out spots. That's thanks to her being in the shadow instead of being at this highlight. Of course, in the shadow, you get a lot of soft lights, but then when you're in the highlight, you don't get a lot of blown out stuff in the picture. As we can see in this one, she is actually in the highlights instead of in the shadows. And it looks a little bit better that this is a little darker and her being the right exposure rather than some parts being blown out. Then we have some of her in the pool being a goofball. Again, more personality ones. There's a lot of personality ones in this photo book. And I really am glad that they have a lot of these. Again, like I said in the beginning, kind of gives the foundation of a photo book in terms of waiting later on for a new photo book and having this one to look back on and seeing her personality in this. So in that way, this could kind of be like a time capsule to capture her moment in time as this member rather than in the future when she changes a little bit, grows up a little bit and changes into the future member that's stronger and better. I wanna talk about this photo because I actually really like this photo. This photo right here, like it shows of course the water slide in the background and I do like the pose and how she's wearing the hood and everything. I feel like everything adds together plus these leading lines over here leaning towards her and her kind of like splitting it towards the middle. I feel like this is very artistic in that sense and her being smack dab in the middle really, really helps that. And of course, since this is in Singapore, we do need a little bit more environmental shots. And I do like this environmental shot with her walking kind of like the Beatles style. So we get to see her walking on the road and along with a fellow person here walking. So we get to see a little bit more of her in action and how she is compared to everyone else, which is really interesting. And next, well, there's a lot of these bed ones where she's sitting down, laying down. But I feel like this one might be the strongest in terms of her posing. I feel like the face she has really says a lot. And plus how the hair is in motion and everything. I feel like this one is a direction she could head towards. And I feel like if she pulls off more of this in the future, her modeling career could be very strong because right here, the face that she has really does say a lot. And even like the lip positioning, having it a little bit open, shows a more natural state, kind of shows a little bit more confidence in her posing. On contrast, we have this one, which isn't the best posing. We have the elbow coming towards the camera. We have the blurry face. We have her kind of like in the middle of making us laugh or smiling or something. This isn't the best pose compared to the other one. And then we have a picture with the merline, just had to put that one in. We have this one right here, which is a flash or a really strong light. I imagine it's a flash. And this photo right here, not the best at all. Um, this seems to be either outside because of the light over here or inside because there seems to be something over here. I'm not totally sure. I mean, why would they keep items outside like this? I mean, but I have seen stores do that. I anyway, know I'm getting off topic. 
This camera here, the hard light coming from the flash is not the most attractive, especially with her being super bright and even a little bit overexposed compared to the background. Maybe a softer light or maybe having it in a different place and maybe buying the sunglasses would have helped and having this photo somewhere else would have been nicer because this is like the only one that's in this location. Now this photo, I was debating whether I liked it or not. I wasn't sure whether I liked that the red is the same as everything inside. And I don't know if this red car over here helps the red or if it makes it a little bit more like everything's completely red. I'm not too positive yet. I do say that maybe this should have been cropped out right here. There's a little edge of it. But I feel like overall, thanks to this leading line, it is a stronger image. Maybe she was wearing green, that would have helped a lot. But then again, you can't really guess when you're going on one of these what color it's going to be. You guys can leave your opinions down below to see whether this red dress plus the red car plus everything here being red really helps because I feel like if this wasn't there and everything was completely red, then it'll be a really solid image. But seeing that it's in a regular street environment, I don't know if it really helps. Let me know down below what you think. Then move to this one and I could see what the photographer was going for kind of going for a little more stylistic, but the thing that ruins it for me, well, two things ruin it for me, it's this white over here, and the fact that the elbow is pointing straight towards the camera, really bad thing to do in posing, um, elbow straight towards the camera makes it look shorter, whatever's pointing towards the camera, as I've said in other videos, makes it look shortened, and this really doesn't help out with the posing, and it makes her arm look big, and just don't do that. And then all of a sudden we get like her crying and it's like smack dab in the middle out of nowhere. Not my favorite thing. Plus it's like really, really blurry and it's like a strong, hard flash. Um, not sure if this was needed. This feels like an outtake that shouldn't have been in there really. I do like this photo right here. I do like that everything is in focus. And I do like the face that she's making eating a hot dog. Uh, I just have to say this photo is really cute and it helps amplify that by having everything big and then her being small in the actual picture frame and plus holding with both hands really does accentuate that. Although this for next photo, this is not the most appealing photo. Number one, blurry, number two, overblown, and number three, it's way too close. This photo right here is actually nice though, thanks to these windows in the background causing this nice rim light around her and her positioning and everything making her look small again but having her face looking straight towards the camera, not face, I mean eyes, eyes straight towards the camera and her face away, kind of giving that like, oh, looking at the corner of your eye, kind of making it, it makes it look kind of like a little kid looking over, but then like turning over and seeing you. It kind of gives off that impression. And even though it's a little bit too cool and magenta, I do like this image a lot. Now this image is an alternate cover and it's not my favorite at all. I feel like this image doesn't really say too much, I feel like this is too close with that wide angle lens. Again, it distorts everything. And I don't like the highlight right here with the nose. I think that might be my biggest issue with it. And the hair being back with the white background, it doesn't really say too much. It's, I think this photo right here would have said more than this photo right here says. And move on to cool characteristic ones again, saying a little bit more about the personality and this one having right here, a little bit more personality because of the goats right here and her looking at it. Uh, if you don't know Yoroyuki that well, uh, she used to have a goat and <laughs> having it right here and her staring at it really does give off like a, oh hey, this photographer at least knows what the fans like or is maybe a fan himself. Here are two images that are actually fairly well done. This one right here, her laying down in the same photo that we saw before where she's getting like ridden around. But this one right here, her laying down, kind of like being like, oh, I'm tired or making the connection with this one, oh, I'm hungry, actually helps carry it on to this one, which is her interacting with other people and eating some of the food, which is a really nice image to see. I just hate that there's so much background over here. If you we look at Nero's photo book, they filled up the white areas and I feel like that really did help the photo book. It helped, it, it helped thicken it up and make it seem less empty. This photo right here, I wish it was bigger. This is a good photo right here, showing a lot of emotion in the face. And even though the background is blurring, having next to maybe like an ocean picture really would have helped, just like it does right here. But then again, this white space makes it look empty. It doesn't make it look as full as it should be. And plus people wanna see this face close up for real. Next, move on to these two images, which have white borders around them, but I feel like they could have been 
easily extended to the full width of it. These kind of look like full frame photos. I don't, I'm not sure if they were shot in full frame cameras, but the depth of field really does give up that impression that it is shot in full frame. Because this one is an alternate take of the back cover. And I do like this photo a lot as well as the back cover. I really like the depth of field it has, the wide angle of it showing a lot of the environment and having her in it. So this tree right here is a little distracting, maybe take that off. But this photo right here is really, really strong. I think this one right here is my favorite of the photo book. Meanwhile, we have this one, which shows a lot of depth of field over here and then shows a lot of focus in here. So this one doesn't really show off like that full frameness, which I think it's actually shot in. Again, having these white borders over here makes it look a little bit more empty. And if this photo right here was all the way full, then it would have felt like a big full frame camera and having everything in there, making it look big and nice. Then move on to the last image, which isn't the strongest. Uh, maybe ending it off on that one that I like a lot would have been really, really strong. Again, this one not the strongest, but it does show a little bit more about the environment and shows her walking around in it, kind of like saying her goodbyes. And moving to the final, final image, which is her in the blurry background, and we get to see this in focus. Maybe if everything was a little bit out of focus, it would have been a little better. Maybe having her in focus would have been better. And having her looking back and kind of like putting on her shorts and being like, all right, I'm out of here. And that has been the photo book. This is a fairly short one. There isn't a lot to say about this photo book, really. Those images that I said were ones really that were noteworthy. There's other ones in there, of course. If you're a fan of Yoro Yuki, you would enjoy a whole bunch. And I think the people who should get this photo book, I'll get right to that, are Yoro Yuki fans. Of course, as every photo book, the fans should get the photo book. But I feel like if you're a fan of Nogizaka, you should pick up this photo book just to see a comparison of how when she eventually releases her second photo book, the difference of how it will be versus now and in the future. Or if you're watching this in the future, how it was in the past. That's kind of weird to think about. So yes, if you want that purpose in your life, go ahead and pick this up or maybe pick it up in the future when you're watching this. But I don't think you should rush out and go buy it. I don't think it's a, you need it right now, just like Neru's or Shinuchi Mai's is. I feel like this is more like, oh hey, you could pick it up like in a year and you'll still enjoy the images in there. So yes, that's been Yoda Yuki's photo book. Again, let me know what you guys think down below. Go ahead and subscribe to keep up to date with the new photo books. I think this is the end of the rush of the 46. We still have Itomarikas coming in January, February, and we have another AKB member, ooh, surprise, in there that's gonna come out. So, look forward to those. Again, that's Itomarika and Kitahararia, who you should look forward to. Uh, but those are a little bit later on, thankfully. I'm getting <laughs> up to here with the editing work that I have. So you can look forward to those, or if you're looking in the future, again, look those up on the channel. So, again, subscribe to keep up to date with that, as well as the news. Go ahead and go subscribe to the podcast channel I have, talking about Sakamichi series and all the stuff that happened recently. We uploaded an award show of showing the best of Sakamichi and the worst of Sakamichi. So look forward to that, look forward to future videos coming out, and as I always say, thank you all for watching.